watching Colorado Public Television 12. I'm self-employed. I'm underemployed. I get a pension, and then I get Social Security. They start out when you're in college, reeling you in with these credit cards. Most kids, no matter what their major is, are coming out with student loans. My student loans are uh, $74,000. This is a huge generational shift, right? You know, our, our parents hope was that we would do better than them, and we're not seeing that. I'm 50 years old with a two-year-old daughter. I don't think I'm going to be able to retire. <laughs> so, you know, I mean... I mean, no. Our livelihood, our lifestyle, our financial security, and ultimately when and how we retire is something each of us wrestles with. These are big issues, affected by a lifetime full of decisions, parsed out on a daily basis. Out on a daily basis. And yeah, it can be stressful. Science has demonstrated that our emotional response to what we lack or think we lack can cause stress and reduce our capacity to make these decisions. Meet Princeton psychologist Eldar Shafir, who studies how our lives are affected by scarcity. When you experience scarcity, it takes a lot of your mental capacity, a lot of your bandwidth, it captures your cognitive resources to a large extent, often at risk, often at high, potentially high cost, because as you're focusing on the thing you need, you ignore the periphery. And what's on the periphery, you ask? Just your life. Things on the periphery, like the kids' school play, become a little bit less central in your mind as you're juggling this time. And you could argue that a year later when you look back, you wish you had been to that play because it would have given you a much higher quality of life than making this additional meeting that at that moment you're so preoccupied with. Back in the early 50s, most of us had more bandwidth. Our financial lives were much simpler. Our houses were half the size they are today. Credit cards barely existed. And far more people had their money in a local bank or under the mattress than in the stock market. Today, Americans carry a collective credit card debt of almost $700 billion. Because of technology and the rise of defined contribution plans like 401ks, over half of us are invested in the stock market. We are living better in many ways, but we're also faced with increasing financial stress. Some of this stress comes from simply wanting more things, keeping up with the Joneses. Part of the psychology of scarcity is, you know, what, how you feel when you feel like you don't have enough. Right now, psychologically, if I'm expected to have something that I cannot afford, I'm going to start feeling, you know, poverty impinging on, on my perception of, of the life I'm living. <laughs> Once used to be the case that having a cell phone was a massive luxury, you know, only the very rich and famous had one, and, you know, 20 years later, it's now completely common and standard, and it's assumed you have one, so if you cannot, if you do not have a cell phone, if you cannot afford a cell phone today, you would be experiencing something very close to poverty. And today, we can't turn on our TVs or tablets without being reminded about a world of new products that we'd love to have. Over the years, the products that we purchase practically declare our membership in the American middle class. Not having them can leave us feeling deprived, which can lead to stress. Dr. Shafir found that stress can do more than add to the demands of daily life, shrinking your bandwidth. An experiment he conducted in a New Jersey mall showed it can also sap your intelligence. He asked shoppers a question. Imagine, for example, that your car broke and it's going to cost X dollars. 